What is up you beauties? My name is Matt Chepigans and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a tank that I think Wargaming has got completely wrong when they have been rebalancing and buffing this tank. That is the WZ-113, the Chinese tier 10 heavy tank. And while this is a heavy tank, it's more of a heavyum. It's got characteristics that do well to fight mediums and flank. And that is the great top speed and the good damage per minute. I think this has 3,200 damage um, stock. Uh, not stock, I should say. 3,200 damage per minute base. And it's got, I think, 50 kilometers top speed limit. And I've had this tank for a while in my garage, but a lot of things have kept me from playing it up until now. And that is the really bad accuracy on the move and also on turret traverse and also that really, really poor um, pin on the main gun, but the biggest thing is it has one of the worst traverse speeds in the entire game. It's certainly the worst for heavy tanks at this tier, for tanks of this caliber and not super heavies. Like, it's hard to describe just how bad this thing traverses without actually having you see it. Um, these games that I'm in right now, I'm trying to limit how much I actually have to traverse, so I'm using a good spot here. Um, also, just briefly, this leopard, I have no idea why he did that. <laughs> I just thought that was so funny when I saw that. Just like, NA teams, in a nutshell, right there. Anyway, the biggest thing when playing this tank that you have to remember is that you need to put yourself in a situation where you're not having to fight a traversing battle. And you're not ha having, like, this battle where you're fighting with gun depression, because those are the kind of the limits and the constraints of this tank, is is gun depression, um, that, kind, that poor standard pen, and the traverse speed so don't put yourself in a fight where you're you know fighting every medium tank and you have no teammates to cover you that would be a really really poor idea so i put myself here in the middle on vineyards to go ahead and let me have some shots into the town to prevent them from going across because with this great reload and dpm i can go ahead and effectively neutralize that side which is very very nice another thing is with this tank We'll, we'll just get into some of the standard pin, right? Most of the time, when you're shooting, it's not going to pin heavy tanks very effectively. Like, they have to be completely pointed right at you. And you'll see an example of that later on in this game. This is a decent game from the beginning perspective, right? We're getting out a lot of damage, but towards the end, I specifically screwed up because this is like one of my first 10 games, I want to say, in the 113. And I wasn't quite used to the pin yet. Um, I am specifically running calibrated because it's already got 3200 DPM. There's not really a necessity for me to go ahead and need more. I think I actually switched to Cali later. I think I played like 30 or so uh, games. I think I switched to calibrated later on because um, I figured that it, the DPM's nice, but I'd like to go ahead and hit those shots that I really need to hit. But in the beginning, I was running, I think, Rammer, and you'll see the issue with running Rammer here in just a second. So we're fighting the IS-7, and as you can see, that traverse is really, really screwing me over. I can't out-traverse the IS-7, and because of that poor turret traverse, I wasn't able to get my gun, you know, with the traverse angled onto his front plate there. I do get a decent shot into the front plate there, but now is where the issues come in. I am trying to shoot, and because of the IS-7's armor the way it is, the premium ammo does not go through the pike nose. And as you can see, I aimed this right at the middle plate, but that hits the outer track wheel. So, still having issues in these brawling situations. The 113 does not like this. And that was just a bad shot from me. But the first couple shots there are just an example of the fact that the 113 does find it difficult to brawl heavy tanks. And it can find it difficult to brawl mediums as well. So it puts, the, it puts this tank in this limbo spot where it's really only great if a tank is distracted and you can farm them from a safe spot. It can't really do some of the stuff that the T110E5 can do. Either way, that is a first class badge and 5,000 damage there on the Vineyards map. And here is the team, decent showing from our STB1. So moving on into the next battle, and I think this is a better use of the 113 overall. I'm more comfortable with the tank now, and at this point, I think I am... Yeah, right now, I'm still running Rammer on the tank, which is good, because the 113, I, I realized, like, the more you play, like, 
you have to adapt to one of two play styles, right? You're either going to sit in one spot and shoot at heavies and use calibrated, or you're going to try to get into those flanking positions with rammer and use that 3400 DPM that this tank can have with rammer to cause absolute havoc on the battlefield. It's going to struggle if you're, you know, brawling any tanks that have decent armor face to face. But if you're going to use rammer, you have to limit those possibilities. I thought that the Yag was going to be turning left here, so I, I was going to cut into the to the right of him, but for some reason he decided to go ahead and pull up there. Already our 62A is getting absolutely wrecked, so I'm going to go ahead and move over here to the left and just try and get some shots into the people who would be flanking this direction. So a bit of a poor shot there on my end. If you didn't know, like I said, the Traverse and the Turret Traverse are not super great when it comes to getting that aiming time to work for you. I think this has like a 3.5 second aiming time, but because of that poor Traverse and poor Turret Traverse, it takes a lot longer to get your shots on target. Unfortunately, here in this scenario, we are getting flanked pretty hard to our right. So at the moment, we just kind of have to focus on this Jagdpanzer and potentially help out our teammates on the left. So my plan here is to go ahead and rush the Fosh as soon as the Jagdpanzer fires. So right there, the Jagdpanzer is fired. I know I'm not going to be able to kill the Jagdpanzer outright, so I'm going to go ahead and rush the guy that is keeping our team from helping me out. And once he's dead, now my team can focus on the Jagdpanzer and we can go ahead and secure this left side, which we go ahead and do. Now, before I start talking about the rest of this game, the one thing I really want to get through you guys' heads is they've been buffing this tank in the wrong ways for so long. This tank never needed more DPM. This tank needs, in essence, better traverse speeds on both turret and hull. If you were to give it that and take away just a little bit of the DPM, maybe bring it down to 3K or, or 2800 DPM, but give it decent traverse speed, this tank would be an absolute menace. It wouldn't be, you know, this, this mediocre tank that can only fit one niche role. And as you can see here, I I don't think I had a chance to look at the pre-game lobby like screen to see what tanks they had. So I didn't know they had a 4005. And that's another shot there on the Kronwagen, which is a good example. It doesn't have really great pre uh, standard pin. So it struggled getting through the side of a Kronwagen, whereas some other tanks might not have. As you can see, this is the optimal position for the 113 shooting tanks who are focused on a flank there and if you're able to angle the frontal armor just enough you'll be able to get bounces so the plan here is to try and bleed them out as much as possible while they are trying to go get my 57 and we're going to attempt to and there's another example of a of a wonky shot i aimed right at the lower plate but um i guess it was some lag that threw it into the track or just the accuracy i mean sometimes the accuracy is that bad but i know for sure that i cannot brawl that e5 to the death so we're going to go ahead and take out the Progetto and let our IS-7 be the one taking hits for us. At this point, we just have to flank and use our DPM to go ahead and solidify this fight between the IS-7 and the C-5. Fortunately, the IS-7 has survived up to this point, which is very, very good, which gives us a chance to go ahead and put in some damage to this guy and take him out, leaving just the 4005 left on the enemy theme. And as you can see, He's been sitting, so he's been full health the entire game, which is great. That gives us some extra damage towards the end. And as you can see, there, there's no way you can trust the armor on this thing. Yes, it has a little bit of a side skirt, but right under the side skirt, the armor is pinnable at almost a flat angle. Like, it is really bad side armor. And the, the frontal armor can be pinned by pretty much any medium or light tank when they load gold. So, can't really trust the armor. Slow traverse and a lot of DPM. What would I suggest for this tank? Well, put it on the flank, put it in a position where it's not gonna get rushed really easily and it should work for you pretty well. That's it for me, Mastery Badge, Top Gun, Radley, Walter's Medal for the five kills, 5,100 damage there on the Oasis Palms map. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. My name has been Batchat Begins. All relevant links will be down in the description and I will see you guys in the next one.